Welcome to Latin Heats Hollywood Talk. I am your host, Val Hernandez. Today, I have the pleasure of speaking with a wonderful friend, David Damian Figueroa. He is an activist, community organizer, a storyteller, a poet, a filmmaker, and a music producer. Yes, he does all of this, and he does it so well. He grew up working in the agricultural fields of Southern Arizona. And as a child, his mother taught him the art of positivity through traditional Mexican regional songs, storytelling, and dichos, which are sayings. And that was to help him pass the time during the long, hot days in the agricultural fields. El Oz is a book that is a retelling with a cultural twist and some of his experiences growing up in Arizona. So I want to welcome David Damian Figueroa to Hollywood Talks. Welcome, David. Thank you so much, Bill. It's great to be here. I finally made it on your show. So I'm excited about it. <laughs> We're excited, excited to have you with us so too. Tell us a little bit about growing up in Arizona and uh, how old you were when you started working in the fields and just a little bit about your life growing up with your mom and your brothers. Well, I grew up in, in Buckeye, Arizona. Um, from the age, from when I was born to like five years old, my parents separated and um, then we moved to Yuma, my mother and my brothers and I. And um, But I actually started working in the fields from eight to 18. We were constantly traveling in Southern Arizona from one city to the next or town to the next. And, but, you know, I really consider Buckeye and uh, Yuma, Arizona, my, my hometowns. Um, we grew up, you know, in an area that there was a lot of discrimination we couldn't speak Spanish in school. Um, it was everything was really about assimilating, about really uh, trying to fit into American society. We didn't feel like we belonged in Mexico because we we did we had never visited there, but we also didn't feel like we belonged in the United States either. So we were just kind of like in limbo, trying to find our ways, trying to assimilate, and um, you know when things like that happen, um, you uh, lose your identity, you lose your culture. Um, my name, my name, David Damien, is a direct result of that. It's a very assimilated name. It's my God-given name, the, the name that my father gave me. So I have a very unusual name for my Chicano friends, but um, I believe it served me well. But we, we grew up um, in a time where um, there was poverty, there was food insecurity, there's homelessness at times. There was just all kinds of things that the, ele the elements that you are um, subjected to. In spite of all this, you grew up with a lot of love. And I think that the, the one of the things that uh, we talked about is your mom and, and introducing you to your culture and making you feel proud of who you were. Yeah, my mom's big saying was that everything is possible, todo es posible. And the other one is that things aren't always going to be like this. She would always say that this is only temporary. This is like a temporary inconvenience. So we have to, you know, look, know, and we would start to, she would start to dream. I imagine when we moved to California and all these things. And my mom at the same time was this big dreamer. She would always talk about one day, you know, I'm going to, you know, uh, I'm going to lose weight. One day I'm going to go back to school. Me voy a arreglar los dientes. I'm going to fix my teeth. You know, um, we're going to go visit to Disneyland and the cousins and she died very early. So we never did any of those things. Mm -hmm. So but that the idea that she left so much unfinished business, so much unfinished, um, unfinished dreams, unfulfilled dreams that I felt like, um, you know, it just when she passed away, just left this this um, longing for me. I, I got to do something. I got to go on and do something because I know that, you know, the, the term that life is short, it's beyond that life is short. Life is to be enjoyed. Life is to be experienced. It's not this short. It's just that whatever amount of time we have, we really need to say, I can do that. I can do this. I can be that. Why can't I have that? Mm -hmm. As long as we're willing to work for it, you know? And that's so interesting because um, you had those dreams and basically I know your life story and your life's journey, but it's it's everything that you wanted to do, you've set out to do, you know, you're you're an activist and a, and a producer and a great singer. Um, and so oh, you, that in your mom is stealing in you that you could do whatever you want. Your your life, it seems, is a journey like 
your character Dolores in El Oz. So let's get into the book and the, the give us a, a real quick synopsis of the story for the audience. So, you know, in, in El Oz, there's a, um, a village, it's a fictitious village, but it's very much based, inspired by Puebla, you know, I, uh, Puebla, Mexico, where Talavera is made, where there's the you know, colonial buildings, it has such a, a French influence. Um, there's the mercados, the smells, all of the things that are all incorporated into this book. And that's the whole setup. Um, I went to Puebla way back in the day. Um, you know, Jose Jose was a client of mine, the singer, he was a client of mine, and we were very dear friends. So one day they, you know, took us to Puebla and I just fell in love with that city. It just seemed like, um, just, it was amazing. So um, I fell in love with Talavera. Anybody who knows me or watches me on Facebook or Instagram knows that I love Talavera. So tell, tell everybody I, what Talavera is, because a lot of Talavera, people don't know. Yeah. Talavera is like, um, it's a pottery of sorts, but it definitely has a very indigenous, Mexican, but Spanish and Italian influence, even French influence. So it has all these, this fusion of, of um, very, which all became very unique to a Mexico, Mexican style of, um, you know, of uh, design, but it, it had this resurgence where people just love it. They're making ties and cufflinks and jewelry and all kinds of things out of Talavera these days. And it started but, out as, as, as um, like tiles and pottery and vases yes. and plates, correct? Correct, correct. And, and um, it's on the buildings, it's everywhere. It's just, just beautiful. Um, but you know, the, in my book, um, the, the yellow brick road from El Wizard of Oz, a wonderful Wizard of Oz, in my book, it's the Talavera path. And, you know, everything is about staying on the path. You know, um, so in this journey, um, you know, Dolores, the young girl, she's nine years old. In the world, in the Azalandia world, she is um, has to get home. She's very, very much. Um, she misses her family. She's very worried about getting home. And every there's all these distractions. Like in life, there's a lot of distractions that get us off center or get us off our what, what I call the divine path, where we're supposed to go. And so she constantly gets on back on the path constant at, at all costs against all odds she meets people along the way and the one thing the transformation of getting her from one side of um from one realm um which is Aslandia to getting back home is really um it's about forgiveness that is the key for her transforming herself to get back home and um there's you know I don't want to give a spoiler to it but um, you know, I'm really, I, I think that, you know, in our, the journey that she has is, is a lot of different journeys, meeting new people, trusting new people, you know, befriending an evil person, forgiving the evil person, forgiving evil deeds, as we all need to do, that we all have this journey that this little girl uh, experiences all in this one path. And that's sort of like our life journey. So that's what I wanted it to be. There's a lot of, there's one thing that I, um, one quote in the book, and I'm kind of paraphrasing it, but Dolores asked her Tia Tonya, you know, how do the butterflies, you know, the monarch butterflies, which are very unique and travel wherever the heck they want to travel, right? Um, how do they know when to start and when to stop? And, you know, when to go again? And she goes, well, they have an internal compass. And inside each one of us has an internal compass. It's called our heart. So all the answers lie within each one of us. And our key is to follow our heart, to follow our instinct, because th those are, that's the truth. And so we should always be seeking and also following the truth. And so I'm really, I'm really proud of the, the, the book. Um, it's gotten really good, re good response, um, selling pretty well. And I'm also just, um, I'm just very grateful how people have received it and, and quoting different parts of it to me, you know, just very, um, it's very touching. Well, because this story is called El Oz and it follows kind of the storyline that the Wizard of Oz has, but this, the things you just mentioned now gives it a totally different look of a journey of a little girl that is 
immer, Im, immersed into the culture. Um, one of the right. other things about the book is the family, the familia that, you know, the Wizard of Oz does have, but this is even more so. It's more intricate. It's more of a cultural thing because familia is so important in the Latino culture. And they they have that as well. And it's it's in a rancho. They're growing up in a rancho. They have the tios. They have the tia. And they talk about farming. And they talk about the earth and how to work the earth. And that's... Mm -hmm amazing that's like getting into the the elements of the world you know mentioning mm. the butterflies mentioning the earth and I, I imagine that a lot of that comes from you having grown up in the fields and and working the fields and also with familia because you are very very close you have familia but then you have more familia who are your friend right. and you consider them familia yeah, my extended family, like yourself. <laughs> so, but I was, I wanted to say that, you know, my book is loosely, loosely based on the original book, which is called The Wonderful Wizard of Oz, which was done by L. Frank, Frank Baum. And it was written in the early 1920s. So I read that book and, and it was later that I saw the film. Um, and, you know, the other book that really, because you talk about the earth, the other book that really, um, just, you know, was made such a big impression on me was Gone with the Wind. The first chapters of uh, Gone with the Wind are all about Terra, the earth, you know, the smells, you know, the just the livelihood and everything. So that was a big influence when I wrote this book. And the other one, um, you know, is The Great Gatsby, you know, uh, F. Scott Fitzgerald. He's very descriptive in his writing. So those are my three of my favorite books. So I try to be very, very descriptive um, about what I wrote in the book, and then also to um, make it very concise, everything. So it's not a really long book, but it's very concise and, and it moves fast. So I'm told, I try to get it to move fast. And so I really wanted it to be that um, if you were to read this story and never had seen uh, The Wizard of Oz or had never had seen the one or read The Wonderful Wizard of Oz, um, that it would be a standalone. And I believe, I'm very proud that it is very much a standalone. You can take some of the characters out and it would still be a story that stood on its own. That was very important to me as, as being the storyteller of, of Ella's. You grew up looking at those classics, but there was no relatability to your culture. And that's what a lot of kids nowadays need. They need to know that they belong, that their experiences are valid. And I love that your book does that. And in a magical, mm -hmm. mystical way um, that they, they, like for little farm worker kids, they could see that and go, oh, that's me. I can take that journey. And mm -hmm. I find that so powerful for our community because it, it informs them that their life is, is something to be read about. Their life mm -hmm. can be something as a classic, you know, should it turned out to be like reading material, which I think this book should be reading material in uh, schools, because this is so important. It gives us a place to say I belong, which is something mm -hmm. that I know I personally grew up not seeing um, myself reflected anywhere. Right. So how has that, have you gotten any feedback regarding that? Yes, and it was intentional. I really, it was, I set out to write a very Mexicano, very Chicano type of book where we could see ourselves. And as you say, there's a lot of books. There, there's some amazing authors right now. Josefina Lopez, Reina Grande, and I could go on and on. Jalissa is another one where you people are reading, writing, about their own experiences and seeing themselves in literature. And there's, you know, to the credit of a lot of publishers, they're buying up these authors, you know, they're not buying up the authors, but buying up the, the, the stories and publishing them, which I think is great. So, you, but it's really the, the women that have really forged forward and really have um, of late and had to, um, and, and making a mark in, in publishing. You know, my book, um, you know, in, in, in going back to the book and the characters, you know, the, the Tin Man, his name is Yero, 
in my book. He runs a recycling center. He's welding and all that kind of thing. And he's a, this boisterous character. And he's very much like my Tio Nacho, very boisterous and you know, kind of highly exaggerative at times. And then Wilo is like my brother, Danny. Um, he's, um, you know, he's very creative, you know, a showman, he could sing, he could dance and, you know, and, um, the, and he, but he's trying to save his community garden. So it has, the other one does with recycling. The other one is, um, is trying to save the community garden. And the other, and El Leon is, represents the homeless. You know, El Leon has been abandoned by the, the, the circus leader and, um, or the ringleader. And um, Dolores gives him water. She befriends him. They unlock him and they, they take him on the journey. And, you know, he's feeling very insecure. And he's also looking for a home because he's been abandoned. So there's a, there's a lot of ref subtle references in the book about um, life as it is today. And, um, and there's also the bully, you know, the landlord who's trying to evict them and how she forgives her. And, you know, and it's just, it's, a, it's, a, it's people that we deal with on an everyday basis. And sometimes, um, you know, we, and, how, and, and gives, I think the tools um, on how to get through this, but the main ingredients for all of it is forgiveness, forgiving and really trying to move forward, staying on the path. And the, the story is so rich. This is a book that everyone can enjoy because mm -hmm. it's about family. It just has the cultural um, uh, side to it that of course is enriching to anyone who wants to learn you know, about other cultures. But I hear it has been doing really, really well. It's got some rave reviews on uh, Lulu. You can get it on Lulu and you can also get it on Amazon. Is that correct? You know, Lulu, Amazon, Walmart, Barnes and Noble, um, Google Books, uh, Apple Books, all over the place. So I'm just really excited about that. Yeah. And and it's a book that can, it's for young kids. Like uh, we said, my husband and I said, you could read it to your young five-year-old. You can, or you can, it's for young adults as well. I mean, it's a, it's right. a magical tour that lets you escape into this world that you have written. I wanted to, to forge forward and write a book that was about family, you know, family time reading where folks, you know, parents could read to their children. So there's not a genre that is for family time reading. It's usually children's books, fiction. So my book is under fiction, but I really wish there was a family time reading book, you know, a family reading book, um, but, but there isn't. So I, I wrote one. <laughs> So El Oz is about Dolores, Dolores's journey and her little dog, which is a Chihuahua, mm -hmm. and, and, and going and finding herself and like staying true to her heart and let her heart follow um, her, her dreams and her path. Mm -hmm. um, but I want to like hearten back to your life. Your life is so amazing. Um, the, the, the journey that you've taken. And I want to see that book because, you know, we're talking about how you started out, you know, um, on, for, uh, as a farm worker as well. And now you've come full circle because now you uh, also work with farm worker justice, which is about farm worker rights. But in between that, you have lived a few lifetimes. Okay, you've, you've uh, been a, a performer, a singer, mm -hmm. you've been a publicist, you've been a producer, you've, you've done so much. You've been an activist all your life. That's mm -hmm. one constant, all your life. Mm -hmm. So when are we going to see that book? But yes, I think, you know, I'd like to write um, some short stories of an anthology of all the people that I work with and the people I met along the way. I think that would be kind of fun. And you, you know, know so many people. I mean, you, you've met President Obama. You're good friends with Eva Longoria. Dolores Huerta, which is a really good friend of yours. She is also the namesake of the little girl in El Oz. So yes. it's it's amazing. I'd like to see that anthology because, uh, I mean, you, you worked with Jose Jose. You knew Selena. Selena. And so many, mm -hmm. so many other wonderful stories that you've shared and people that you know that is really amazing so that anthology would be a great one if i'm going to write an anthology it'll be about lessons learned you know things that man you know we're meeting so many great people and what is the takeaway from that not the photo op not in but the heart-to-heart -heart lesson that you really really learned from that person because they learned it 
from someone else as well, you know? Well, I'm looking forward to that. that everyone, please, uh, El Oz is available on Lulu and Amazon and uh, Barnes and Noble everywhere. Just look it up, go to David Damien uh, Figueroa's Facebook page. Um, and Instagram is also David Damien, right, David? It's a David Damien F. And all, all Damien. my all my handles, all my social media handles are David Damien F. Yes, follow me. And I follow people back. <laughs> I'm like, I'm not one of those people who say, oh, they're following me. I'll follow you right back. And David Damien has an exciting life. There's never not, not anything happening. There's always something happening in David's life. And it's all wonderful beautiful things so make oh, sure you thanks. follow him and keep up with his book and book uh, readings that he's going to have and get yourself a copy of this book get yourself a few copies because you want to give you are going to want to give it to your uh to your family to your um, nephews and and sons and daughters so thank you so much david we really appreciate you taking time to chat with us and uh we'll talk next time Thank you, Bill. I appreciate it.